Welcome to Metaverse Adventures. My name is Immersive Matthew. Today is July 27th, and this is your Oculus Quest Week in Review. This week, we're going to always start off with our Quest hype cycle. We'll talk about some of the shipping issues, and maybe they're easing up. we got some data to share with you there. We're then going to talk about a really cool couple games that came out this week, including Raccoon Lagoon. Then we're going to talk about a mind-blowing new Quest experience. If you're down in California, you might want to go check this out. We'll talk about Half-Life. We talked about it last week, but this week there's more to report, and you're going to be playing it next week, so that's really cool. We're going to talk about a virtual drum set for those of you who want to maybe practice and play drums in a virtual environment, and a whole pile of cool community updates. Stay tuned. <laughs> So let's begin our week as we always do by looking at Google Trends data. And I'm even searching for the Oculus Quest, the Rift S, and the Valve Index over the last three months. And we all know that they peaked on the first when they first got announced. They peaked again on the 21st when they got released, That's particularly the Quest and the Rift S, of course. And then they all sort of settled back down with only the Quest remaining higher than their others. It's clearly the leader right now. And in fact, when you compare the Quest to all other HMDs in the market, the Quest actually is the most searched for term. So and that remains this week, as you can see, the data is slightly down. And in fact, if you look at this data all the way back from more or less the 21st of May, you can see there's been a general downward trend in the data. I think it's safe to say that now. So it's slowly going down, it means less and less people are searching for the quest. Now, I don't know if we're just in the law before Christmas. Maybe all the uh, issues with the shipping have kind of turned people off. Or maybe the hype Bible is finally settling down and we're seeing more realistic numbers for the quest. I don't know where it's going to go. But last week, I was doing a little bit of comparison just to level set us against other devices. And we looked at the Nintendo Switch Lite. As you know, it just got announced by Nintendo. And the day that it did, it was very hyped, far more than the Quest has seen in its hype cycle so far. But what's interesting, as I showed last week, is that the Nintendo Switch hype cycle was very short-lived and it came crashing back down. And in fact, this week, it actually crashed so far that it's actually just below the Quest as of this news. And I really am very surprised, actually. I thought it would have been well above the Quest for quite a long time, all the way through Christmas, in fact. So I don't know what's going on. It could be the summer. Uh, people are now off doing other activities. They're not necessarily thinking about spending time indoors with electronics. So maybe we'll see this all change in the fall. But is it the data? It's where it's at. And as always, I'll report this week to week because I really do believe that Google Trends is a leading indicator around the level of interest on the Quest. So now that all of you are probably getting your Quest and that rolls into the next cycle, maybe we're gonna see more and more interest Gaining again as more of you are out there showing your family and friends and others your quest. This week on the Amazon, I do have some good news to report. The quest is back on the top 100 again. That's right. The 64 gigabyte model is at position number 87. And that's a little surprising actually because they're not in stock still. Uh, the 64 gigabyte model will be in stock according to Amazon on August 2nd. And if you order it now, you'll get yours sometime between August 12th and August 15th. That's about two and a half weeks from now. That's not terrible. Uh, certainly there's been a lot of people who've waited longer than that over the past couple of months. Uh, just some people, right? Some of you actually, some of Metaverse Adventure subscribers have made comments specifically about Amazon that they ordered and all said and done with all those shipping updates they kept on getting, it took about a month. So don't know if this two and a half week timeline is realistic if you order on Amazon today, but that's what their website says. That's all we can go on. But I wouldn't hold my breath too much based on all the comments a lot of you have been leaving. The 128 gigabyte model, same status actually as the 64, also back in stock on August 2nd, and same delivery date, it's about two and a half weeks. The 64 gigabyte has traditionally been in higher demand than the 128, but we have seen the 128 head pull ahead of the 64 on the Amazon Top 100 a couple of times now. 
but maybe we'll see it get back onto that list in the coming weeks once stock really begins to flow. And I think once we see Amazon able to retain stock, you know, you can, you can order it anytime and it's there and I'll ship it to you immediately. Once we see that on both devices, I'm gonna predict that we're gonna see it back on the Amazon top 100. And I can see it being in the top 50 or even 20 as we get towards Christmas. But let's see, that's my prediction. I'm gonna put that out there here today. Going on to other retailers, the Oculus Store, they are actually shipping their 64 gigabyte model by August 2nd. And a lot of people who've been getting their Oculus Quest from Oculus have actually been getting it faster, generally speaking, than the time that Oculus says it will be delivered by. So that's pretty cool. If it ships August 2nd, you might have it as early as a week and a half from now. The 120 gigabyte model ships a little quicker, actually, on the 31st of July. So same thing. You, that's probably the fastest place to get it today. Best Buy also has them in stock finally again. The 64 gigabyte model on their site ships on August 5th, or you could pick it up in store on August 6th. What's interesting is Best Buy's 120 gigabyte model ships on the same time frame as the 64 gigabyte, that's August 5th, but for some reason it says you can pick it up in store on August 1st. So. That's actually one of, the, one of the quicker dates possibly to get one. So if you've got a Best Buy near you, go check to see if they can get drop shipped to that store because it might be faster than getting it delivered to you via courier. Uh, Walmart also has stock in and they're saying that you can go by and pick it up or have it delivered on August 2nd for both the 64 gigabyte and the 128 gigabyte. You know, there's been a lot of speculation over the last two months because so many people were not getting their quests. And the question really was, was there a demand so high and supply couldn't meet or was the supply down because of maybe manufacturing problems or other issues getting them into the hands of people? And we don't know. We don't have any real data on this point. We're seeing things maybe ease up now and it looks like maybe supply is beginning to flow a little better. So it appears like it might have been a supply issue. When you look at Facebook, uh, this week Mark Zuckerberg in his quarterly annual report made an official statement saying, and I'll quote this, it has gotten great reviews and we're selling them as fast as we can make them. And that's important here because he's now on record officially said that they are manufacturing that product as quickly as they possibly can. So they are indeed trying to keep up with demand. This is, this is a message that he's giving to his shareholders. And so they want to know the truth. They want to know where things are at. If there's a problem, he would have said it. If the you know, supply was down and they're below the expectations, they would have tapered their expectations you know, very cautiously, of course, without actually saying it point blank. But in this case here, what he's indicated is that they're just putting them out as quick as they possibly can. So it does seem like this whole time, this last maybe two months of shortages, it does seem like it might have strictly just been a supply issue, not an artificial supply issue, just that the supply just could not keep up with the huge demand that we're all seeing. So this bodes very well for the Quest, and I really wish Oculus all the best as we head into this very first holiday season. And I think they're gonna need to get a lot of press, they're gonna need to be sold out, they're gonna need to be the hot item in all the news channels and blogs and everywhere, I think for this thing to really take off. And I'm gonna predict right now that I think that we're gonna see the Quest being up there with like, you know, items of the year for Christmas, along with things like Nintendo Lite and other really kind of slick devices. So let's see where it goes for Christmas because I'm really excited because I really feel that the data is telling us that demand is gonna go way up. But we'll see. All right, I'm gonna do things a little bit differently this week. Usually I have this next section, which is hardware at the very end of the news. But this week, I'm bringing it up front because some big things happened this week, which many of you may or may not be aware of. Oculus released a new Quest build. This is their operating system that's behind the scenes and it automatically updates. You don't have to do anything on your end. However, if you're having problems, go over to r slash Oculus Quest and there's others in there who also were having problems and there's some tips on how you can get around that, including rebooting your Quest. Mine updated automatically since yesterday and it has a, a whole pile of really cool improvements. The most notable is the improved tracking that we know the Oculus has been working very hard on for the past few months. And I have to say, I think their efforts have been very worthwhile. It does seem to be better. I have played around with it, not extensively, 
but in my limited testing, it just feels tighter. Playing Beat Saber, I felt like uh, I, the dilts that I missed, the blocks that I missed, felt like I really missed them versus, oh, the controller just got lost. I am still able to re reproduce some of the swinging stuff that I had been showing you in my other videos. I'm gonna do an update to that probably next week. Uh, but I would say just anecdotally, it just feels tighter. In fact, I would say even going across my face in front of me, it just felt more, I don't know how else to say this, but real time. It felt less laggy. I didn't notice it even that was a problem before, but it just feels more presence for me. It feels more snappy than it ever has. And of course, they've done a bunch of improvements beyond just making it snappy. The most notable updates for tracking are uh, it now tracks closer to your face. So if you've got like a bow or an arrow and you're coming in here, you may have noticed a lot of times it would lose it. It can't see it up front. Or if you're boxing, you're trying to take a block and creed. There's lots of games that benefit by this because up front, close to your face is a common thing. Same with like, you know, you got a gun. So this is a great, very welcomed update. And how they did this at Oculus is beyond me because when you get that close, and you can try this just by turning, going into Guardian setup mode, the same camera as that computer vision seeing, bring up your uh, controller close and you'll see it's just a mess in front of you. So I don't know how it does this, but good on them. They've also done some things around underhand movements. So when you're doing a rolling the bowl, your hand can actually occlude the uh, the ring and then the cameras can't see the camera, it can't see the controllers very well. So they've apparently fixed that as well. And I've done a little testing with that and I was not able to get it to break tracking. Whereas before I could sometimes. They've also reduced the reacquisition time. And I think this is actually a fairly important one. And this is one thing I'll definitely give you a hint at. When I'm doing my swing test and it you know, loses it in the air, it snaps back way faster than it ever did before. Before, you could get it hanging in the air there for quite a few seconds before the cameras realized, oh, it's over there, right? And now it just seems like that is so fast that it was actually harder for me to detect when it was losing tracking. So a lot more on that next week, but it does seem like they've done some great things. And unofficially, a lot of people are saying that it's actually better in sunnier rooms. And my limited testing also would confirm in my living room here, if I don't close the blinds in the afternoon, I, I can't play very well. It's really glitchy. But today I did a test before I came on the news here and it seems, it seemed, it seemed fine. So I don't know what your experience is. Go ahead and leave me a comment below what you think about the tracking improvements. Cause that's probably one of the bigger things that came out with this update. There are a bunch of other things that came up with this update. Little things like you can now use both controllers in the menus and laser beams come out of both at the same time. You may recall in the previous model, you only had one laser beam, one controller. If you wanted to change it, you pull a trigger and the laser beam moves to the other one, but now you can't use this one. It was kind of weird. I didn't really like that. So now you got both, you can point and click both of them, which is, makes it a much easier environment. They enhanced the audio, it sounds better. I haven't, can't see I've noticed anything myself yet. Maybe you have, comment below. They've done some in, in, improvements around the search. Now you can get to your search on any screen within the Quest Home. They've added a new experiment section, so you get to go in and enable this, but it gives you new experimental features that you might wanna go and check out. And the current one is a Bluetooth keyboard. So I know a lot of you have asked me, can you use Bluetooth? And there were ways in the past to do this, but now officially you can get a Bluetooth keyboard, plunk it down, and then with VR desktop or other apps that access your PC, you can type and, and even use a Bluetooth mouse and get that experience. That's really cool. Uh, they have a new night mode, and this is one that I was really hoping they would give us because I do find that being in the quest before bedtime, this wakes me up and my body thinks, oh, it's middle of the day. So with the new night mode, it's gonna reduce that blue light and it's the blue light actually that triggers your brain into thinking that it's more daytime than heading towards night. So that's a wonderful addition. Thank you very much, Oculus, for that. All of our health and our sleep will benefit. They've also improved the performance of the Guardian and specifically, they've actually allowed us to adjust the sensitivity. So some of you may know this, if you've got a smaller space, something, you know, around the six to eight foot mark. And even then when you're in the dead middle and your arms are anywhere near the edge, if you have a fast swing, the, since the sensitivity will realize you might be coming over to the barrier, you better put it up so the person can see that they're getting there. 
and it's irritating because you're in Beat Saber and you're swiping hard, you got that grid flashing up, you know, all the time. It's really irritating. And even though you know you're not going to hit the wall, it's not, not that kind of game. So they allowed you to dial that down, which is really nice. And now when you swing, you know, fast and wide in a smaller space, you, you're likely to have less of that triggering. So that was a nice improvement. They've also allowed you to adjust the floor height without having to reset the entire Guardian. I don't know how many people have had a problem with this. I've never had a problem with the floor height. It seems to be bang on every time. And even if you do it manual reset and bring it down and touch the floor, I find it's no more accurate than when it first found the floor. But maybe some of you were having a problem on different flooring surfaces. So you can go and just reset that anytime you want. You also allowed to have multiple Guardians now in the same room which I thought was kind of weird because that I had that before. I have several play spaces, one for seated. You know, I have a couple in this room where I can play. And when I put on my Quest, I can see the one I'm in, which is the one I'm seated on my couch. But I also can see the other one over here. And I've always been able to do that. So I don't know exactly what this feature does, but now officially you can have more than one in a room. That's kind of cool. And they've also added now event notifications. So if you subscribe to an event and say big screen, it will now tell you inside the Quest, not just on your phone. So that's a nice feature because I have missed a couple things. I just didn't realize they didn't have that before. So, you know, good on Oculus. This seems like a really great build. It doesn't address everything that people are looking for, but it does address some of the bigger ones. And I'm really excited to see what's next because we know that Facebook is working on something really big with social side of things. And I'm sure that will come with a plethora of additional updates. So good on Oculus. Thank you for supporting your product. And thank you so much for the improved tracking. It really does feel, mm, I don't want to put a number on it, but let me play one of them more. But it's feeling pretty darn good, like pretty darn good. Also in the hardware section, another really cool mod is coming for the Quest. So we all know that the Quest is probably not the most comfortable head mount display for most of us, myself included. I find it to be the least comfortable. And you see me in my videos talk about the head straps and counterweights and, and uh, facial interfaces, uh, all different things trying to get a little more comfortable. And of course, if you've got the money, you can go out and spend 75 to 100 bucks and buy the HTC Vives deluxe audio strap, which most people say is the best. And I haven't tried this one myself yet. I'm pretty happy actually with just a Studio Forms strap for now. But there is another option coming. Now, I don't know when this is gonna be here in Canada or in the United States or Europe or other parts of the world, but right now in China on a site called, and forgive me if I say this wrong, uh, Tobo or Taobao, something like that. It's, uh, it's a device that's around 30 to 35 bucks US, and it's a halo design, as you can see here in these pictures, sort of like the ones that we see on the Rift S or PlayStation VR, and some of the best head straps, actually. In fact, my Samsung Odyssey has a similar design where it ratchets at the back, and I just love it. It is my favorite because it doesn't necessarily pull the uh, HMD onto your face. It's not like strapped on with Velcro and elastic, elastic bands. It sort of kind of perches in front of your face because all the strapping and all the tightness is sort of on the crown of your head. It's much more comfortable. So let's hope that this one's coming. Apparently, one user said that they believe it's coming to the Amazon store. We'll see. If not this one, I'm sure by Christmas, we'll have half a dozen different options of different designs and we can all go out and get more comfortable Quest interfaces. All right, on the games available in the Oculus Quest store right now, I've got a number that I wanna share with you. The first one is one called Raccoon Lagoon by Hidden Path Entertainment. It launched just this past Thursday and it's already getting a lot of attention over on the Oculus Quest subreddit. People are really digging this game. They're comparing it to one called Animal Crossing, for any of you familiar with Nintendo games. It's sort of in that similar vein. A lot of people say it reminds them very heavily of that game. It already has 49 reviews, and it gets a 4.9 out of 5 on the Oculus Store. So really, really good reviews. It's a game where you get to be, take over this group of adorable sailors who get marooned on this island, you got to help build them a home and basically repair the island's broken heart is sort of the game's premise. It has eight beautiful areas, all with distinct climates on the island. 
There's, there's a fishing game, there's cooking, farming, mining, painting, theme decorations, and many hours of stories and quests to go on. There's literally so much to do in this game, and it's got a lot of cool variety. And just looking at the video here, it appeals to me, and this is something that I think I may pick up, although it looks like it might be something that's going to take a lot more time than I have right now for VR, but it does sound very appealing. It's both a single-player game, a multiplayer game, and for me, the best part of all is co-op. And this is one that my girl and I might want to get into. That might bring me into this game because I really love playing games with her in VR. It's so much fun. So, if you like Animal Crossing or cute games like this where you got all these cool little activities, I think this is definitely one to check out. Raccoon Lagoon. Looks awesome for the Quest. Also this week, a game called Republic VR came out for the Quest, and it's getting decent reviews as well. Not as high as Raccoon Lagoon, but it's getting a 4 out of 5 on the Oculus Quest store, and it comes from industry veterans Camouflage. You don't know who they are. They're the makers of Metal Gear Solid, Halo, and Fear. So this is a group that knows what they're doing. They got a lot of credentials, and this game is a kind of a... It's a stealth action game that explores the perils of government surveillance in the internet age. That sounds kind of familiar. A little too familiar. Anyways, it's a game where it's got lots of immersive puzzles and you gotta make a lot of strategic choices. It's not a run and gun. It's more of an innovative space for VR. It's a game that was built on other platforms now for a number of years. So this is nothing new per se, but it's new to the Quest. It's ported over quite well, maybe not as perfectly as some of the other iterations, but very well overall, it's an enjoyable experience. If you want to know more about it and want to make a, you know, a more informed decision, BMF did a review on it over here. It's a great review. It gives you a good overview, it talks about all the different aspects of the game, how long it is, the goods and the bads. So if you're kind of on the fence in this one or want to learn more, go check out that review. And if you like stealth games, then probably this is one just to go ahead and pick up because four out of five is a decent score. It's probably going to be a fun game and it's not too expensive. And the last game to talk about this week is one called Racket Fury. Now this is from developer Pixel Edge Games and it gets decent reviews in the store already, about 4.1 out of 5. They put out an update this week to address a number of issues and improve the game overall. So they've improved the physics and based on comments in the Oculus Quest subreddit, it apparently is a much better. In fact, there used to be this test where you take your ping pong racket, you would drop your ping pong ball on it and it would just simply bounce there perpetually. Like the physics was just a little bit off, but users confirming that it now settles down like it should and it feels a lot more realistic and I guess the balls feel a little heavier than they did before I don't know how they did that but just people's comments are saying yeah they really are noticing a great improvement in the physics they've added a new multiplayer mode they've added some new day and nighttime scenery which is kind of cool plus they fixed a whole pile of bugs so I would say that this is a game that if you already have and you were kind of having some frustrations with it especially in the physics department Go check it out again. If you're new to the game and you're interested, this could be one if you're into ping pong, table tennis type games. This is one of the better ones. And it's a fast paced, a lot of fun. And with multiplayer, this is going to bring an interesting dimension to this game. In fact, over on Reddit, user BA1NO said that the tracking and fluidity is so much better now. Nearly a new game for me. That's a pretty powerful statement, and I really think it says a lot about how much work this team has put into tweaking this game and improving it. And uh, I hope to see that score rise a little bit as a result of these, especially those new multiplayer options. I think that's going to bring some interesting aspects. And of course, tight physics is just going to make for a much better gaming experience. So good on that team. Way to go, Pixel Edge Games. And uh, if you're already on the game, your update's are already in. So just go ahead and try it out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I've got three stories for you this week. Two are going to be quick. One's going to be a little bit more of a mind blown. So hold on for that one. The first one is Firefox. I've talked about Firefox in past weeks that they were bringing it to the Quest. Well, it's officially in the store and it's a cool app. It's sort of like the Oculus browser in that it browses all your websites. It also allows you to engage in web VR content. That's content like Moonriders where it literally pulls the entire web browser around you and next thing you know, you're in VR playing that game just with a click of a button right from the browser. It's really cool. But I think the big benefit really with Firefox is private browsing because as you may or may not know, 
everything you search for in the Oculus browser is tracked by Facebook. So if you don't want them tracking everywhere you're going and everything you're looking at, then Firefox browser, it's a privacy browser, privacy focused browser, is something you probably are going to want to have a quick peek at. A word of warning, some people are saying that actually WebVR isn't performing very well now, right now in Firefox, and if that's the case, I'm sure a fix will be around the corner very shortly. Another app that came out this week is one called Amazon Prime VR. This is an app that allows you to access all your Prime content, plus they've added some VR content as well. And just like Netflix apps and others, you get your own little kind of personal theater that Amazon's gone and made for you. It's interesting because the release of it, it seems rather limited, and I can't tell exactly where it's being released. For sure, the USA store can get it, but the Canadian store, the German store, the Australian store, and others all over on Reddit are saying they don't see it in their store. So apparently this is a limited rollout. I'm sure we'll see it in other regions soon enough. But, but if you're an Amazon Prime user and you want to get access to your content in your Quest officially, this is the way to go and do it. And the last story in our apps and experiences section is one that is truly exciting, especially if you're in California or heading to California anytime soon. There's an organization down there called The Grid, and they've gone ahead and built a sort of like the void-like experience where you've got real-world objects overlaid into a virtual environment. And they've gone to the nth degree, including people going down real stairs that map to the virtual stairs, so real stairs matching to the quest stairs, which is kind of gutsy. I, I guess they're really confident in the, you know, the, the accuracy of the tracking with the quest. And in fact, they have a fairly big space, as you can see here in this video, and they're running around touching stuff, and they don't seem to be having any problems with syncing. I don't know if this is all done exclusively on the quest or some sort of external gear to help facilitate all this, but it looks awesome. And as you can see in this video here, what is this guy doing for real? Yeah. <laughs> wow. I mean, that's, uh, that's the future of VR, I guess. I mean, there's some extreme gameplay here. So this is available right now. They're open from Tuesdays to Sundays. And they're down in Oceanside, California. I think that if you have any interest in experiencing what we're calling, what they like to call hyper-reality, where virtual reality and real reality are merged together, you blend the two, you can't even tell what is what anymore, this is something to go check out. And it uses the Quest. I don't know if you can even bring your own Quest. I have no idea. But if you've been there, please go ahead and comment. Let me know what you think. I'm actually considering maybe making a trip down there at some point because this is the kind of stuff that really gets me excited about the Quest. And I think we're going to see a lot more of this. And hopefully at OC6 in September, Oculus gives us a little more information around their plans. Because we know we saw this when they did their Dead and Buried Arena scale thing. There was a 4,000 square foot arena with six players back at OC5. So I'm really hoping they show us something because it looks like the community, they're out there already developing this kind of code and content. All right, Sideload. Sideload's got some interesting issues this week, unfortunately. And the reason why I put the harbor section up front was that it is what broke SideQuest. And not completely, but certainly a lot of games aren't functioning either properly, or are having issues with the controllers, or they're just not loading at all. And it would be like most games. But the good news is, a lot of hard work has been going on behind the scenes by SideQuest themselves, by developers, by talented people in this community who've been trying to figure out how to get around all these problems. And some are blaming it that Oculus did it on purpose, but others are saying when they look at the code and what happened, that probably not necessarily on purpose, uh, but probably could have been a little more careful. But the good news is that developer of the SideQuest, they've known this. They're saying that they're gonna make some changes to SideQuest going forward so that the next time this happens, it will automatically update itself. And then as, as games fix any issues with updates, it will also just automatically download them to the Quest. So you don't have to worry about which ones are working, which ones are, it'll just tell you right in that application, the dashboard, and when updates are ready, it will just automatically load them into your Quest for you. So that's nice. If you have a side quest right now, you're going to have to first update side quest, and then you're going to go and find out which games have been updated 
So you might want to wait a few days to let the dust settle, maybe even sometime next week if you, know, if you can wait. Because by then, I would imagine most content will be fixed. Not all, because some people are on holidays and other developers are busy in other games now. So there's going to be some stragglers that may never work again, unfortunately. But I think by and large, most things will be working within the next week here or so. It's too bad that this happened. But the good news is SideQuest is doing remarkably well. In fact, just this past week, they celebrated 100,000 downloads. And that really surprised me. You know, first off, that's a decent percentage of what I would imagine the entire install base is. And I said like last week, I think it's in the high hundreds of thousands, maybe in the low millions. So let's just say it's even a million. And that means that if that's true-ish in that ballpark, 100,000 downloads for SideQuest, and that's just SideQuest sideloading. There's other ways of sideloading as well here. That means that like maybe 10% or more of you are doing sideloads. That's a heck of a lot of people. And there's a lot of interest in unofficial content. So if you haven't got SideQuest yet, you know, go ahead and uh, go check it out. Links are below to their website. It is super, super easy to install and it allows you to get access to a lot of content. So if you're getting kind of bored of the Quest store and none of new content coming in, if Raccoon Lagoon or Republic isn't your thing this week, then go and check out SideQuest because SideQuest takes a whole bunch of different games and puts them in a nice, easy format to browse. You click a button, it installs it right to your Quest, and you can go and try those out. And there's a lot of really, really cool content to go try. Last week, I talked about Dr. Beef's new mod to take Half-Life and make it work for the Quest. And this week, I have some good news for you that officially on Monday, July 29th, you will be able to buy and install this on your Quest. That's right. Next week, you're going to be able to play Half-Life in your Quest. I didn't think it was going to be that soon when I reported on it last week. I thought it might be a few more months, but I guess Dr. Beef's had a lot of success and it's ready to go. Now, you do have to go buy the original game first because you need to get a license to get all the assets. It doesn't include any of that. But once you do, and it's like $9.99 right now on Steam, you go ahead and follow a bunch of instructions to sideload the game onto your quest and it has full 6 3 tracking and you can play the entire campaign of Half-Life in VR which is something that, like I said last week, I didn't see that necessarily coming so soon on the Quest. I thought we'd see it on the Valve Index first, but <laughs> this fan community, the Quest community, is really something. They're tenacious, and they're putting everything they can on this device. I just love this Quest. This is by far my most favorite VR device. And if you're curious to see what this looks like, Gamertag VR has a really cool gameplay video where you can watch him play it for quite a while and get a sense to see if it's something you want to invest your time in. And it's going to be on SideQuest, so hang tight if you want to wait for that sometime shortly on Monday. We'll see that. Links below. And another really cool side load application that you might want to try, especially if you're a fan of the original Nintendo Virtual Boy. This came from developer Sid Von Highwind over on Reddit where he posted just this week and he said he's updated his Virtual Boy emulator. He originally wrote it for Gear VR and the Oculus Go and now it supports the Quest with full 6 degree of freedom. And this is going to allow you to go back and play those original Virtual Boy games like Wario Land or Jack In or Mario. There's some pretty cool games in there. Now, none of them are spectacular. The, the Virtual Boy, as you probably all know, crashed and burned pretty hard because it didn't deliver a great experience but if you want to see what that experience was like without just watching a video of it you get a sort of sense here if you want to see what it was really like this is a really cool way to go try it out so if you want a bit of gaming history this is a great way to go back in time and try the nintendo virtual boy look for links below on how to install it super super easy to sideload in our coming soon section, I have two titles I want to review with you. The first one is a really cool drum program. That's right. It's a virtual drum setup. And you get your whole setup of drums and you don't have to own a physical drum, which is really kind of cool. The application is called Paradiddle and it's from developer Paradiddle. And they put a lot of love into this game. It's already out on other platforms. And right now it's being ported over to the Quest. And in fact, it's in a kind of pre-beta form. It's not complete. It doesn't have all the same things that it's going to have when it's complete. But if you want to go and try it today, 
You just gotta jump on their Discord, go to the Quest channel, and at the very top where all the pin messages are, there's a little button there you can press to get to the pin messages. Uh, you can go and download the APK and sideload it to your Quest today. And I've gone and tried this, and it is super duper cool. You have this like drums from a big list, you pull them out, you place them where you want all around you, cymbals, bass kick, hi-hat, snare, you know, the whole ensemble. And then with your virtual drumsticks, you can drum away. And I have to tell you, it feels strangely real. Like I could easily play on those drums and play along the music as if they were real. The weight of the touch controllers, the vibrate, there's just something about the whole thing that you really do feel like you're hitting a drum. Uh, really feel like you're hitting a drum. It's really, really cool. And they don't have pedals today for like the bass or the hi-hat, but they're working on adding those accessories like Bluetooth pedals maybe or something they don't know yet. They're working through it. That would be super cool because I think that's the one thing that's missing for me right now was a pedal. But this is something that I think is going to grow big. In fact, I've done some other musical experiences inside the Quest and I had been nothing but just blown away because I can see how today there's probably some very talented musicians, but they're limited in their funds. They can't buy a studio. They can't have all these different keyboards and equipment around them. But, you know, in virtual reality and one day with augmented reality, you know, they have a massive studio with all the gear you could possibly ever want, uh, you know, and I'm sure there'll be like physical controllers that will come out that will have keys on them, but they don't do anything with, unless you're in VR and the VR gives that tactile feedback, but and then the keyboard lights up and the buttons light up and it shows you, you know, what they do. Like it just, the, the possibilities here are really exciting. So if you're a musician or you're into drums or you want to learn how to drum, or you are an awesome drummer, you want to drum along to your favorite track, go check this app out. Links are below. Join your Discord, get on the beta, give it a whirl, and you can be drumming like this fella here. And the last coming soon game I want to talk about is one called Synth Rider. And I've talked about this one before. It's another one of these rhythm games. And this one does get quite a bit of fan noise. It's uh, apparently one of the better ones. Now, what's actually really cool about it, not only is it coming to the Oculus Quest, but already today, if you go to bsaber.com, they've already got a whole section of modded songs for it. So even before it's out, there's already mods. So this is really exciting. So I think we're going to find that very quickly, Synth Rider might rise up there with the likes of Beat Saber in terms of popularity. And this is one I have not tried yet, but it does appeal to me. The gameplay style is a little bit different, and it does appeal to me. So if you're into rhythm games, do keep your eye on this one and I'll be reporting back to you again once it's officially in the store and we see some of those early reviews. All right, and our last section this week is the community section. I got three stories for you and the very first one is for none other than Metaverse Adventures subscriber Wagner's Tech Talks. A fellow over there who runs that channel named John sent me a link last week after I did my story on Gravity Sketch being available for the Quest now. Now, John has gone and worked with Gravity Sketch, and he's done quite a bit of work with it. In fact, he's done a really cool video that you can see here and link below to his channel if you want to go check it out yourself, where he's gone and modeled a character in Gravity Sketch in VR, exported it, and then went ahead and 3D printed it. And I just find that so mind-blowing that you could do something virtual and next thing you know, you've got it physical. And he actually calls it virtual to physical or V2P. He noted that making those objects in VR, those 3D objects, took significantly less time to do the exact same thing in more traditional modeling tools. And that this could be the future way of doing th you know, 3D models because it's so much faster. And you have more presence and you can look at it and rotate it and whatnot. And then later on, you can 3D print it. And so to me, that is a really mind-blowing thing. And I do predict that things like this, people modeling stuff, designing stuff in VR, and then 3D printing it, it's gonna become more and more common. Because it's so much better to be virtually looking at an object versus looking at a computer screen, and you know, you get a sense of the 3D object, and then you print it out, and then you realize, oop, that wasn't all right, that was the wrong size, it's not the scale, doesn't feel right. At least now you can cut a lot of that you know, cycle out and get it right where you want it in VR, and when it comes to the other end, it looks exactly the same. So that is, this is the future, and it's early days yet, these tools are still developing. But look what John did with it. It's awesome that he's created this object in VR. And if you're looking for a YouTube channel that goes a little bit more in depth into various applications and games, go check out John's channel because 
he goes through all the menus, all the options. He's very, very thorough. It's less about the, watching him play it and more about him exploring the application. So if that's something you're interested in, go check his channel out. He's got a bunch of Quest videos on there now. And last week I talked about a game called Zenith and this week they're in the news again because they've hit a thousand people on their Discord already. But that's not where they want to stop. They want to march straight up to 10,000 people and I think they're going to do it. But to help incentivize everybody, they're actually putting together a reward system. That's right, a referral reward system. So if you refer somebody, one person, two, three, four, five, up to 25 referrals as different levels and as different rewards. And depending on what it is, you might get an in-game outfit and, and other items by making these referrals, which is really cool. These are exclusive items. So you know, when you're wearing that in the game, you know, it's not something you're gonna be able to buy or go get in the quest. So it's very exclusive. And when you refer to somebody, you get Zen tokens. For every person that you, that you refer, you get three eligible Zen tokens. And then those Zen tokens can be used to redeem all sorts of cool stuff within the game. And what's cool, not only do you, as the person referring somebody, get the Zen token, but the person who's coming in as the referee also gets Zen tokens. So it's a win-win for everybody. And I think this is a brilliant idea for these early adopters who are getting excited about the game they can't even play yet, but they can at least start getting some virtual items, which I think is a brilliant strategy. So if Zenith is your cup of tea, and again, it's a MMORPG with some pretty big ambitions in changing some of the formulas that we've not loved about MMORPGs, then I would highly recommend you get on their Discord server. It's a wonderful community. It's a lot of good chat going on in there. It's a lot of excitement happening. There's even some early play tests that you might be able to get invited to. So go ahead and find those links below and let's get excited about Zenith and let's grow that community. Let's get them to 10,000. Another really cool community update this week from Metaverse Adventure subscriber, Ed Costada. He said, and I thought this was brilliant, that he has found a number of ways to make his quest more comfortable too. So I talked about a bunch of ways last week and then in my, my video around comfort and fit. Ed's been using online 3D print services where you can browse a catalog of different 3D things to print and then go ahead and hit that button and next thing you know it gets printed and mailed to you. He's been doing that and he's found three items in particular that he's found very, very helpful. One is a Quest battery clip. It clips on the back, as you can see here in the photo, so that you get extra power. Plus, as you know, it's a counterweight, which is very helpful for taking some of that weight off the front of your face. There's the Oculus Quest magnetic prescription lens adapter. Basically, if you've got prescription lenses, you can just snap them on with magnets right on top of your original factory Quest lenses. So that's a cool addition. And then there's a headband, sort of like the fabric one I have here from Studio Forms, but it's a plastic headband that also lifts some of that weight off the front. That, and they're all inexpensive. They're supporting sort of, you know, the community who are really into 3D printing. All three links are below. They all go to the same site, that's thingiverse.com. And not only do they have these comfort options for the Quest, but they've also got a whole pile of other options that you can explore and look into. Headphone adapter snaps, holders for your Quest, uh, lens covers so you don't get sun in there. there. There's so many things. So if you're into 3D printing or just want to enhance your Quest at a low price, something that you go check out. And the last story today I want to put on your radar is one about Metaverse Adventures again. Just like last week when I announced that we're going to be hosting brand new DJ events in the Metaverse inside of Tribe XR. A link below to go and join the Discord and get access to this program for the Quest. I want to let you know that we're moving along very well. We've done a number of tests. It is so exciting in there. I'm putting together a how-to video because there's a couple quirks we've got to work around on these early days. But I'm going to put a video out. And starting early next week, I'm going to be putting out flash tests. That means that all of a sudden, I'm going to put out a note to all subscribers. And by the way, there's 50 people so far that have signed up for the mail list who want to come and dance. So wonderful. I haven't even marketed yet outside of just Metaverse Adventures and the Tribe Discord. That's the only place that I've talked about it. And we've already got 50 and I've already got 10 DJs too lined up. So people are very interested in this. Next week, we're going to be doing test runs. Like I said, they're going to be flash test runs. So I'll just put out an email to everybody on my distribution list saying, in 30 minutes, come join me inside of Tribe XR. So if that's something interests you, keep your eye on your email. I'll be doing more official events with more time frame, you know, like a date 
that we all can plan towards would be in an evening so people can, you know, will be accessible. Next week's flash tests are going to be at 10 in the morning or 2 in the afternoon or 7 p.m. at night. I have no idea yet because I want to go in there, get a bunch of people, flush out some issues. I'm going to be recording some videos around how to get in there, how to situate yourself because there's a couple glitches, a couple quirks about the experience that I have. we have to kind of work around. But I'm really excited to get a lot of you in there. And I'm going to start off with just a few of you. And I'm hoping by the end of next week, we can do tests where we've got 16 people in there. And that's, fingers crossed, we can get that many in and it doesn't crash the quest because there is that possibility. But I do have the commitment from the developer that, you know, you know while we're not their priority because they are a DJ school first and foremost, they are really curious to see where this goes. And if we get enough noise and enough attention and we can grow this, then we probably have a good chance to really take this somewhere. So if you haven't registered already, a link below to go and join the Metaverse Night Lounge and look at your inbox because emails are coming your way very soon. All right, that's it for this week. Another awesome week of Oculus Quest news. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments, questions, tips for even next week, go ahead and leave them below. I try to read all of your comments and reply to all of you. And this is a great community, so feel free to read others' comments because there's a lot of good content in there for sure. The next news is going to be August 3rd. If anything comes up between now and then, keep an eye on my channel because I like to post a lot in my community section if you haven't noticed. Keep your eye out for that dance invite early next week if you're interested. And I will see you all, maybe literally, in the metaverse next week inside of TribeXR. We'll see.